December 7, 1941. On a quiet Sunday morning, the American naval base at Pearl Harbor on Oahu Island found itself in the crosshairs of one of military history's most infamous surprise attacks. But was the attack on Pearl Harbor truly a surprise? I'm West, and tonight with my co-host CJ, we'll be exploring the conspiracy theories surrounding the attack on Pearl Harbor. In the end, you'll have the chance to cast your vote and decide which is the most convincing mystery theory. You have your shot glass that I got you? <laughs> yeah, in the other room. Yeah, so uh, so I went to Las Vegas, Nevada. I, uh, I didn't get a chance to go to Area 51, but I did visit America's only alien-themed whorehouse. And I got the hat, and I got some merch for CJ as well. So yeah, I didn't make it to Area 51. I was a little bit busy. By the alien, the alien women. I did go in, but I did not partake of the services. I did not inhale. Mostly because I had a head cold. If I didn't have a head cold, it's all bets would have been off. <laughs> but I just wanted to be moral. I don't want to get these girls sick. I'm pretty sure I had long COVID. I didn't want to give that to <laughs> America's only alien-themed whorehouse. That has now gotten long COVID from every from them. <laughs> yeah, if there's that's how you'll find out I'm lying. If it if there's like a, an epidemic of long COVID through the prostitution community, I'm like oh no, he, apparently he did. He did inhale at the cat house. CJ, do you have any fucking idea what our mystery is tonight? No, I, I, I don't. I have no clue. I feel like we've done every single type of thing. We've done cryptids. We've done alien abductions. We've done, we've done ghost stories. Well, we really haven't touched on conspiracy theories of the political kind. That all ends today when we get to the bottom of... JFK's assassination. The JFK assassination. Nope, actually Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. The attack on Pearl Harbor. CJ, what do you know about Pearl Harbor? Uh, it was when a bunch of people, the Japanese decided that they would not let us just sit around and they went over to a base in Hawaii and basically bombed a couple of ships. The Indianapolis was one of the big uh, things that happened there. <laughs> wait, wait, is, is, do you think that's part of Pearl Harbor? I want you to fact check me. Okay, I think the I fact check. The, 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 the Snopes fact check might be coming in hard on you on this one. The Indianapolis. You, you're thinking of the Jaws story, right? Yes, yes. Wasn't that from what during Pearl Harbor? No, that was. Um, I believe that was the boat that transported the nuclear bomb before it flew out. Oh, you're right. And uh, the I think you're thinking of the the USS Arizona is the one that sunk. And I only know this because I literally researched Pearl Harbor for this. Everything. Yeah. All I, wouldn't right, have, well, I wouldn't have known any of this. You know, it's also a comedy show. I don't know how you make Pearl Harbor funny. By putting a bunch of wacky people dancing on the boat. <laughs> okay, on the Arizona? <laughs> on the Arizona, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it makes it a little bit better. With Hitler, if you put a funny hat on him, he wouldn't look as imposing. Like a wizard hat, he would be, you would look at that picture and be like, oh, he's giving people directions. All right, so to really to really understand Pearl Harbor, I think it helps to look at like the history of like the state of the world during that time. Let's go through like what what everyone was doing during that time. So Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler, at this point they had conquered most of Europe, and then by June 1941 Germany had launched uh, Operation Barbarossa. This is the operation that would ultimately lead Germany to to losing the war, but at this point it, it had been going pretty well. The Japanese were involved in their second Sino-Japanese war, uh, and the US obviously was neutral during this time we were kind of we were basically helping out everyone through policies like the lend lease act so we were giving supplies to people but we were uh, officially neutral so why did japan attack japan under emperor hirohito they had these ambitions to become like the next big empire but they they lacked a lot of the the natural resources that they needed and japan relied on america for like 80 percent of its oil in response to Japan's territorial ambitions, and then they also recently allied with the Nazis, the US started putting these embargoes on Japan and basically cut them off from all these resources that they needed to expand. So they start looking around. What they wanted to do basically was that they were looking at the, the Dutch East Indies, which was like a very oil 
rich area and not not yep. very well protected. But what was between the Dutch East Indies and Japan were the, was the Philippines. And the Philippines was an American colony at the time. So what, what Pearl Harbor was supposed to do was basically like temporarily cripple America's ability to respond to an attack in the Pacific Ocean. Whoa. That would give them enough time to conquer the Philippines and fortify it before America would be able to mount a counterattack. And they thought, well, at that point, they would probably go like, do we really want to get into this like long drawn out thing with Japan? And so maybe they would just like negotiate for peace instead. But if you think America will have shy away from unnecessary conflicts in foreign soil, well, boy, you don't know this country because we love that shit. <laughs> Seems history repeats itself in many different ways. But God bless it. We, not God only we we jumped in that we jumped it. in that war with two feet, and we in, invented technology that will ultimately destroy all of humanity. Yeah, essentially, yeah. All you Barbenheimers know what I'm talking about. Barbenheimers. Guys, are you an Oppenheimer or are you a Bar uh, Bar? Barbie Heimer. Are you Barbie Barbin, or an Oppenheimer? Barbie Hyman. Are you a, a Barbie, Barbie Hyman? Hyman? <laughs> if you're an Oppenheimer, you're not touching the Hyman. <laughs> and it's all happening for this this little dweeb right here, this emperor here. I know he looks like a he looks like a nerdy little motherfucker. I know he looks like a fucking little nerd. He looks like a esports athlete. That pencil thin mustache. He does look like an esports person. You do not. You don't. You don't want to run into that guy in Valorant. He's gonna wipe the floor. Dude, with you. he's gonna fucking Fortnite the shit out of you. Look at. He is wearing a funny hat though. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's. This is backing up your theory. All right. So December seventh, nineteen forty-one. So this is this is the big day. The day yep. we shall live in infamy. Just before 8 a.m., the first attack wave of 183 aircraft appeared over Pearl Harbor. So the wave was separated into three groups. The first two groups uh, were of dive bombers and fighters, and they targeted the hangars and other parked aircraft. And the third group of torpedo bombers targeted the ships in the harbor. Uh, so this first wave passes through of about 183 aircraft, and then an hour later, the second attack wave of 170 aircraft started their attack. In just over an hour, the Japanese had damaged or sunk 18 warships, destroyed 188 aircraft, about 2,335 people died, Crazy. 1,100 were wounded, around 70 civilians, five battleships were sunk, only two were permanently sunk, and that's the Arizona and the Oklahoma. That's a lot of people. We look at 2300 for casualties as being low. To me as a person, I'm like, God damn, that's, you know, 2335 too many. Yeah, that's a lot of people. And then Japan, for their troubles, they lost 29 planes and five midget submarines. It was a really bad day if you're a Japanese midget submariner. Yeah. On top of having that title, you also die at Pearl Harbor. You see the the plane there? That's the Japanese Zero. So that was the like the new like high tech plane. It was like one of the best attack planes you could have. It was made by Mitsubishi. Of course it was. What a weird trajectory to go from making warplanes to okay television sets and all right cars. Oh, I know that. Wait, they make cars? Mitsu Mitsubishi Clips. Yeah. Oh, okay, I don't know cars that well. Pearl Harbor happened to slow down the production of the Ford in America because they knew eventually Mitsubishi would get the Lancer out. That's the theory. Was Pearl Harbor the most intricate mar marketing. marketing effort to promote the Mitsubishi Eclipse? The next day, I mean, so we all know what happened afterwards. The next day, mm -hmm. Roosevelt addresses Congress. He gives his day of infamy speech. He's like, yo, bitch, we better do this. He said, fuck around. Find, find out. out since then the government's made about nine or so official inquiries into the attack between 1941 and 1946 and the 10th and 95 and 95 yeah why so late huh. so, so, what happened what else happened in 1995 that could spur oh here it goes actually i feel like i have to check now what happened in 1995 Oh, I thought you were going to tell me you had something crazy. Oh, no. So, yeah, I, no, I wish I did. I wish I really like, screamed too. I was like, shit. <laughs> I mean, that's really all I have to say about Pearl Harbor. Everyone Fair knows enough. the story. You know, you saw, we all saw the movie. Ben Affleck painted Matt Damon like one of those French girls. Gave him a, gave him a jewel. The heart of the ocean, they called it. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's time we stop focusing on the past. And let's, let's start getting into the theories. Uh, so theory number one is U.S. advanced knowledge. They knew this was coming. What if they knew it was coming? 
All right, so let's go through some of the some of the evidence that backs this up. So the first thing I think is important to check out is the the bomb plot message. The bomb plot messages were a series of intercepted Japanese diplomatic messages decoded by U.S. intelligence. Uh, so they originated from Tokyo and they were sent to the Japanese embassies in Honolulu. And these communications were requesting like the specific coordinates of the American warships in Pearl Harbor. Specifically, they, they requested it in a like a grid coordinate format, which is like something that you would give to bombers if you wanted to like lay out like an attack map. Like if we intercept that, I feel like we should that puts out a pretty major red flag. Yeah, should be like shit. It's time to get ready. Let's also take a look at Station H. So one week prior to the attack on the other side of Oahu Island was one of many shortwave listening stations operated by a U.S. Navy, and it intercepted a message that said the task force keeps its movement strictly secret and maintaining close guard against submarines and aircraft shall advance into Hawaiian waters and upon the very opening of hostilities shall attack the main force of the United States fleet in Hawaii and deal it a mortal blow. This station got like torn down since then. It was a secret station. It was like hidden behind a convenience store. That picture there, the colored picture is uh, what it looks like now. It's a well where Samara was captured. What? The ring. I'm doing a ring. Or in Ringu, which is the Japanese version of the ring, which was the first version. Now the conspiracy theories are hit. Go watch Ringu backwards and tell us if there's any hidden messages. <laughs> For Pearl Harbor. Ringu is Pearl Harbor. What's, so ring, one, what's Ringu backwards? Been... You. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you N word? Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's a. Uh, no. You, it's... <laughs> you Ginner. All right, I feel like we're getting somewhere here. <laughs> the strings are being attached to the different plots. <laughs> <clears throat> also, there were the winds codes. Japan put out this message to all their embassies that said, hey, if shit goes down, we're gonna put a secret code into our like daily news broadcast. Specifically, we're gonna hide the, the news code in the, the weather report. If we say east wind rain, that means we're, we've gone to war with the US. If we say east wind clear, that means we've gone to war with Britain. It's and fucking then, raining outside, shit. <laughs> that's that's the code no for real i was telling you it's actually there is an east wind and it's rain yeah what happens if that was just the that was just the weather that day ss Lurline was a like a passenger vessel and it was traveling mm -hmm. from honolulu to san francisco yeah so the, the radio operator above this passenger vessel also reported like hearing japanese codes so he reported the japs are blasting away on the lower marine radio frequency it is all in japanese code and continues for several hours some of the signals were loud others were weak but in most every case the repeat back was acknowledged verbatim so much of the signals reaching us on the ss alert line were good enough to get good rdf which means he could track their position like he knew where they were the, the radio frequency was so yeah. loud he could like pinpoint where they were we noted that the signals were being repeated back possibly for copying by craft with small antennas and they were specifically they were repeating it on this this lower marine frequency so if, if anyone knows about like submarines the the lower frequencies uh, transmit better through water so it seemed like what i think what was happening here was that a, a signal is being sent from the japan shoreline to this attack fleet and then the ships would pick it up and then rebroadcast it on the lower frequency to the either other nearby boats that don't have as large antennas or probably also for the the submarines underneath and then so after the pearl harbor attack the the u.s naval intelligence paid him a visit and took his log books and his notes the the thing that we just read he like uh rewrote that from memory because all his shit got confiscated after pearl harbor whoa that's crazy that he remembered all that too Oh, the other thing that's worth noting is that there were two aircraft carriers that would have normally been stationed there, and they both were sent out for other other assignments. One of them was sent out like just days before the attack. Was that good or bad? Well, it's kind of how you look at it. Like if, if there were if there were aircraft carriers there, then we would have had a better counter strike ability. Mm -hmm. But I think it just would have. Every one of those Japanese torpedo bombers were like looking for an aircraft. They all wanted to hit an aircraft carrier so i think if they had been there i mean we probably would have taken down more japanese but i think we would have probably lost both our aircraft carriers do you believe we had the intelligence beforehand and we we're like yeah we have to send these ships out for what we call moves yeah. and then all of a sudden boom then they're like oh well that worked out in our favor exactly so theory number two is provocation 
what if what if America didn't necessarily know that an attack was going to happen, but what if they were trying to provoke it? Yeah. So let's take a look at uh, Admiral Frankie Betty. Now, he served as an aide to the Secretary of Navy uh, during the time of Pearl Harbor, and he was very close to President Roosevelt. He like wrote an article for U.S. News World Report. He says, It was evident to me that we were pushing Japan into a corner. I believe that it was the desire of President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill that we get into the war, as they felt the Allies could not win without us, and all of our efforts to cause the Germans to declare war on us failed. The conditions we imposed upon Japan to get out of China, for example, were so severe that we knew that yeah. a nation would could not accept them. Basically, he was trying to oust his own country. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it. Now, he's since, I think, gone on the record to be like, that might be like a mischaracterization of what he's saying, but I don't know. He seems pretty clear what he's saying there. Yeah. So we can also look at take a look at FDR's administrative assistant, Jonathan Daniels. So he remarked after Pearl Harbor that the blow was heavier than he had hoped it would necessarily be, but the risks paid off. Even the loss was worth the price. Damn. And then uh, 10 days before the attack, U.S. Secretary of War Henry Stimson entered a note into his diary where he claimed that he had met with FDR and discussed the evidence of an impending hostilities with Japan. And the question was how we should maneuver them into the position of firing the first shot without allowing too much danger to ourselves. Oh, shit. It's basically, he was like, we're going to give up our pawn so then we can move our knight into checkmate. There's also the McCollum memo. Uh, now, he served as U.S. Naval Intelligence, and he was the director of specifically the Far East Asia section. So he wrote this memo formally titled Memorandum for the Director of Naval Intelligence. And this memo proposed this like provocative eight point action plan designed to provoke Japan into committing an overt act of war against the US. And if you look at it, if you want to pause the video and, and read through this, you'll see that every single thing on this list happened. Damn. Theory number three is the British advanced knowledge. What if America didn't know, but but Britain did. Yeah, so this theory, it is it is a lot of, I'll say there's not as much like hard evidence as there is for the American advanced knowledge. It is a lot of hearsay. Um, but hey, you know, the, uh, tea can be fun too. So one theory is that like maybe Britain knew about the winds codes or they, they heard the winds code. So they heard east wind rain. And they were like, eh. and they just didn't tell us. Victor Cavendish Bentick, uh, pictured here, uh, he was the wartime chairman of Britain's Joint Intelligence Committee, and he recalled a meeting where he discussed that a Japanese fleet was heading towards Hawaii, and he remarked he heard somebody say that Washington had been informed, but then obviously they never were. Yeah. So this is like, this is not some like crazy guy off the street. He's like a guy that would have been in the room hearing this kind of thing. And he said that he was in a meeting and he heard that, that they were talking about a Japanese fleet heading towards Hawaii. But again, it's just, it's his word. Also, Sir Julian Ridsdale, he served in the War Office's Far East section. He recalled a meeting where it was concluded that the Japanese fleet posed a major threat to the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. And it was agreed that the president of the United States should be alerted. So Grace Garner, who was the confidential secretary to uh, Sir William Stevenson. Sir William Stevenson was like a British agent during World War II. He's actually the guy that apparently James Bond was, was based off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his secretary, Grace Garner, she said in a report once that British intelligence knew about the planned attack on December 7th and had warned both London and Washington. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I guess all these, they're not the best British advanced knowledge theories because I guess they all, they all say that they also warned America too, but I think the idea is that they think that, they're, that they got lied to, that it was discussed that uh, America had been informed when, when actually they weren't. Never happened. Who cares these fucking buck teeth losers say? <laughs> you're gonna trust, you're gonna trust any of these teeth. fucking people. You're gonna you trust don't see them at all. Well, if you, you can see them, they they be they had to Photoshop them out because they were so fucking huge. Pissing off the car people, pissing off the British people. The Top Gear fans are not gonna like this video. Top Gear's fucking Top Gear fans are gonna video. do. That's that's by the way, that's a British good boy. The the that Top Gear fans and the 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 American Titanic enthusiasts should should get together. All wearing furry costumes while doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they should get together and, and <laughs> should get together and become furries. So in theory number four is just surprise attack. That's just the plain Jane. This is what happened. Yeah. And so like evidence for that would be lack of specific intelligence for any of these. So they they they've got a lot of communications, but none of them really 
were specific enough to know that there was going to be a, an attack happening. They thought things were ramping up, but they did, they just didn't think it was going to culminate in an attack that fast. That fast, like they all kind of felt like something oh. was, was inevitably going to happen. They just didn't think it was going to happen quite that quickly. They knew something. There was an underlying thing, but it was like, oh, it's not going to happen today. Also, they they had all the investigations and inquiries. They've had ten at least. Uh, official inquiries, which I mean, whatever. I guess you can feel how you will about that. To me, that yeah. kind of it sounds like it's just the government being like, "Well, we investigated ourselves, and we found oh, that we, we didn't did we didn't do anything wrong." I, I mean, I don't know what. I guess you can just assign whatever value you want to that. Yeah. And then historical consensus. And most historians just kind of go with uh, this theory, but there's really not that much debunking. Like, there's not that much out there debunking what's known. It's just, I guess, a lot yeah. of people feel like um, I don't know. It's like maybe too much information. They they didn't know what to pay attention to, and it's just it's just like pure incompetence. That the, the the overabundance of all this information shit slips through the cracks. Now, CJ, we're gonna have to get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna we're gonna need some answers, and you're gonna have to tell us which theory do you decide. The U.S. knows the U.S. knew the attack of Pearl Harbor was coming. To me, there's probably a piece of that. They might have caught wind on some stuff, but instead of being like, yeah, this is going to happen tomorrow, they were like, yep, this is going to happen in a couple weeks. We should kind of get ready, but not put sense of urgency on there. Provocation. There is a possibility that they were like pushing the buttons so then they can get in there. We had investments that we knew that if we got into this war, that would pay off at a sweet dividend. So maybe they did. They pushed the Japanese as far as they could. And it gives us a good stance um, to get the American backers behind them. You saw that more recently when we look at like 9-11. The Brits knew. A part of me would want to say, yeah, maybe that they knew that something was going to go on and they just were getting their asses handed to us and they needed us to bail them out. I feel like if the British came to us and were like, hey, our resources are getting flidowed. We need help. I'm sure we would have figured out something. And then the the fourth one, surprise, like, I think there, you would have to be like, a little naive if you were to be like, oh, I we never saw this coming. I'm not saying that we fully were invested and we knew that this was going to happen, but I feel like we knew that something was on the horizon and that if something did happen then that gives us the ability to jump in so i would i would tell you if i was going to uh put what theories i thought i would i would throw uh one and two together so before we before we go let's talk about one last thing let's talk about a dice game by the name of deadly double Uh, on November 21st, a series of ads appeared in the New Yorker magazine for a dice game called The Deadly Double. The headline read, Octung Warning Alert, and an image showed people in an air raid shelter playing dice. The dice in the photo were numbered 12 and 7, and as a date, that would be December 7th. What's even weirder is this game, it's its not even clear if this game even existed. On the internet, you can find like, there's like one guy who claims he has this game. So there's some pictures on Reddit of a dude claiming that he has this game. And that's it. This company, Monarch Publishing Company, that company doesn't exist. They were made like a week before this ad was published and then was just like, it has done nothing since. That's crazy. I, I guess they tracked the guy down that put the ad in and he, he said that there was no connection to Pearl Harbor or anything. He just like made a, a dice game, which no one can seem to like find. Again, there's like there's like a, a pictures from like a guy that has it. Um, and the guy that claimed that he made this game later went on to work for the CIA. Holy shit. So what the fuck is up with that? Well, then how, so how would he know that it was going to happen 12-7? I don't or know. Or was it like, we're trying to either shoot for 12-5 that's still pretty fucking weird that's weird that the person that made it is like then gets put into the cia which wasn't even made yet in what sense does that make like when's it like the cia gets created and then they go like all right we need to hire a guy like oh here's a guy that made a dice game <laughs> like all right bring yeah him. this guy this guy made a dice game we're gonna need that it's I'm I'm getting pretty good at magic cards. Can I join the FBI? Like, yeah, all right, you're in, man. Let's go. All right, hop in. You're gonna fucking be a sorcerer. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna cast a lightning bolt at a at a white supremacist in Minnesota. 
That's it. Any parting messages? This was a very sad day for both parties. War is something that you shouldn't go in on. But it, it is crazy, though. Like, all this stuff happened, right? And now it's like, I don't know, like, Japan's kind of like, you know, back in a good spot with the U.S. and vice versa. They're cool with us. We're cool with them. So we're in a good spot now. I'm glad we are. You gave us anime and we gave you baseball. So I think we're cool now. <laughs> you gave us anime. We got you guys got baseball.